Welcome to the channel. I'm Rob. Nadia is hanging out behind the camera today. And we're here today to talk a little bit about our journey with the Coffee Lot robot. Um, we've had this now for about a year and a half or so, and it's been a real adventure. We've really got to explore espresso in a much greater depth than I've ever known before. And Nadia has been drinking espresso for the first time in her life. <laughs> and really enjoying it. So <laughs> I wanted to share sort of how we've evolved and what we've discovered along the way in using this this wonderful little coffee machine that we really enjoy. We we get a lot of pleasure out of this thing because it's we we happen to love the design. I know some people are a little me, but we love it and it makes makes us smile every day. So we really enjoy using it. And along the way, for me, I've always drunk espresso and I, I've always had a lot of coffee. Um, but the interesting thing for me is that I've gone from being like a really confirmed dark roast coffee drinker. Um, for my whole life, I've been drinking mostly dark roast coffee. And as we've started to explore espresso using this machine, I've started to expand my tastes into a much lighter roast. Um, this sort of started with Nadia because she, she was, um, we were sort of playing around with getting different blends of coffee and she found that she really liked the lighter roasts. And so I started buying a slightly darker espresso blend for me and a lighter one for her. And then I started to sort of taste what she was doing. And it's been a real exploration and I'm sort of enjoying some of the, the subtler flavors of the lighter roasts rather than the really roasty dark caramel flavors of the dark roast. I still love the dark roast coffee, but it's been a real expansion of my palate in a really interesting way. And along with the evolution of my tastes from darker to lighter roasts, we've also sort of evolved our technique with the robot itself. Now, originally I was looking at Paul Pratt. Now, Paul is the inventor of the robot and the, man, and the one person manufacturer. And he recommends a technique where you put your coffee in somewhere around 10 to 20 grams of coffee and uh, put it into the, this sort of dosing cup like this and then fill it with water, like within about five to eight millimeters of the top. And then that goes into the machine and you start pushing down, applying pressure. And when you get the amount of coffee out that you want, you sort of back off the pressure a little bit, take your cup out, put in a refuse cup, and then push the rest of the water through. And I found that was sort of an awkward way of working. And I also found that if you, when you sort of back off the pressure, if you pull up too far, you risk actually lifting this screen up to an odd angle, at which point when you pressure down again, you could damage the screen. And I didn't want to do that. James Hoffman suggested a slightly different technique where you, you measure your beans going in and then you measure the water going in. And you sort of accommodate for about a gram or a little more of water being absorbed by each gram of coffee. So you sort of decide where how much you want to extract you add in about a gram per gram of coffee and you come up with an amount of, co of water to put in in order to get your formula output. I know that sounds sort of complicated but it's actually sort of simple. So where I've netted out to is I'm running about 18.3 <laughs> somewhere around there uh, grams of coffee ground in our Kinu hand grinder, the Kinu Phoenix. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then I add 
somewhere around like 58 to 62 grams of water. And that allows for around 20 grams of it to be absorbed into the coffee puck. And I get out somewhere around 36 to 40 grams of espresso. So I'm looking at about a two to one extraction or a two to one ratio or recipe for the for my beans to final espresso. I find that's a nice balance and what I like about it is I just push all the water straight through and I maintain a relatively consistent pressure at around six to eight bars and then it just tapers off a little bit at the end as I get right down to the bottom it tapers off sort of like a traditional spring driven espresso machine. And I find that that's working, then I get a nice clean puck out. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, sort of overflow water, and it makes for a really nice controllable routine. And I find that that is working really nicely for me. Now, the one thing you need to do in order to sort of execute this and make it work is have a scale that fits in the robot. And that's something that a lot of people have mentioned because some people have complained that the legs on the robot are too narrow for most scales to fit under. So I found this scale from a company called Greater Goods. It's available on Amazon and we'll have a link to it. It's just a simple, um, you know, gram or ounce scale with a tear function. So it's very easy to measure with and it slips right in between the legs which is great because that way I can measure my coffee in, I can weigh the coffee in, I can weigh the espresso out and know exactly what I'm getting. So I sort of, I can check myself and make sure things are going. And one of the things that I've really learned to appreciate, and I think we both do really, is that, you know, when you start off working with it, you're sort of using the gauge on the front to sort of judge your pressure. But then as you get used to the machine and a little bit more familiar with it, you start to feel the sort of back pressure on the coffee and you know how much strength you're putting into your arms. If you, you know, I know now that if I feel like the coffee is just like going straight through, then my grind isn't fine enough and the water is rushing through. If, however, I feel like I'm sort of pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing's happening, then my grind is too fine. So I find that I'm able to make very small little adjustments to the way the coffee flows through and the way the grind controls the, the sort of back pressure to really hone in on exactly what we want to extract from the coffee. Which brings us to our Kinu grinder. And this was rec uh, recommended to us by uh, Justin at Cafune. And the reason he recommended it is because it's so simple to make really finite adjustments or really finite, really minute adjustments to the grind setting to sort of accommodate exactly how sensitive this machine is. Because we're not, we're not just using a boiler to push an amount of water through it. You're doing it by hand and so you have control over it. So. This has a beautiful little knob at the top that you just loosen off slightly, make very small incremental adjustments. Like I can just set this for right there. And the way you uh, start it out is you basically loosen this off, you wind it down until the burrs touch, and then you back it off from there. And we have found that somewhere around, we got, took a full rotation, and then somewhere between five and six. So a rotation and a half or so seems to work for the coffees that we're binding, buying and what we like to get out of them. So I'm usually somewhere for the, for the lighter blend, we both seem to be somewhere around what we call 1.5 to 1.6. And with the darker beans, it really varies a little bit because they, um, darker beans, because of the roast, they're much easier to crush and you can feel the grinder doesn't have as much resistance. So sometimes I have to coarsen the grind a little bit because the beans are smashing up a little bit smaller and I find uh, it gets stuck. And then sometimes depending on the age of the beans, 
it seems like they become more porous over time. And then I'll, you know, I'll use the grind setting that I was using for the light roast and the coffee just whooshes through. So I need to tighten it up. So it's those little variables that we can tweak with this and really dial in exactly what we want to do and do it almost on a cup by cup basis. Because we've also noticed that as our beans age, I mean, usually when we buy them, they're relatively freshly roasted because we're buying them directly from roasters. We're blessed here in Toronto with a number of really good coffee roasting companies. And so we buy the beans and I try and buy them so that I can let them rest for at least four or five days before I have to start using them. That allows the beans to off gas and sort of settle in. And then as they age further and further, as we're going through the, the pound or so of coffee, I find we have to make little tweaks and adjustments to sort of maintain the consistency of flow. So that's why I love this Kinu grinder for doing this. It gives us that little control. So shall we make some coffee? Now, let me get these out of our way. So I'm going to work with our lighter roast coffee. This is a uh, blend of coffee that our roaster calls Slipstream. And we've both really gotten to, we really are enjoying this one. So first thing I'm going to do is measure out 18.3 ish grams of coffee. And I use the little, um, cup from the coffee lot, the, the coffee and water holder. I find it's a really convenient way of measuring the beans. So I just drop this on the scale. Meanwhile, I'll get some water up to the boil on our beautiful blue star stove that we love as a result of our kitchen renovation. So measure out some beans. There we go, that's 18.1. Bean, one more bean, 18.3, 18.4. Um, I know some people are gonna take us to task for having glass uh, containers for our coffee because it does let light in, but we have them tucked in underneath the counter so they're not really exposed to light and we do love the look of them. And they make nice, they're nice for pouring out of, so we just, we love the look, so. There's our 18.3 to four grams. Oh, um, the other thing, oh, there it is. Another little tweak, thanks to James Hoffman, is our little squirter. This is just filled with regular water, just a little um, squirt thing. And what this does is I squirt this on the beans before they go into the grinder. And it stops a buildup of static electricity in the burrs. Uh, because I was noticing uh, before I started doing this, when I would open the little cup, it would like um, grinds would sort of be all over the place because of the strat static energy. Just a couple of squirts of water in there totally prevents that. So now I have the grinder set to 1.55. And this goes in here and we grind. This is our little morning exercise. Ah. This is my resistance exercise routine. If I drink enough coffee, I'm going to be buff. <laughs> and I can feel as the beans are getting close to the end, I start to sort of, I mean, I can hear it and lose resistance. And then I give it a little tap just to knock down any stray beans that have stuck to the edge. And that's it. Beans are ground. I can hear the water has boiled. So now what I do is I, one of the other things we sort of added to our kit is we purchased the sort of deluxe cup from Kino. This is a nice heavy stainless steel cup sort of held on by rare earth magnets, which is really nice. And the best thing is it gives a little weight to the bottom of the grinder, makes it just a little bit less tippy Let than the... Know that we made a video on accessories. Yes, we have a video that you can watch on all of our coffee accessories and purchases and things like that. We'll have a link to that right there. And here's the coffee, it goes into the cup. 
And you see there's nothing flying around because of the nice little squirt thing that we did. Now, another thing that we've, I've sort of, this is my own little customization, is this, um, the tamper that comes with the, um, the robot, which the robot will hold if you want him to. There we go. Uh, I found it a little bit awkward to work with because it's sort of, I have big hands and it's sort of down in there. Um, so what I found was I sort of took a couple of wine corks ah, and I sort of cut them to size. So somewhere from my hands at least, around a cork and a half, and I'll show you how, how it looks. So I just push this in and then this guy goes in and so he's sticking up about that much and therefore when he sits in my hand he rubs up right up nicely against the sort of palm of my hand and gives me a nice feel as I'm tamping and allows me to make sure that my tamp is nice and level. Now I know that um, uh, Cafe Lot makes a self-leveling tamper but actually I found that since I did this with the cork, I don't have any problem getting the tamp nice and consistent and level. And you've also found that since it has a bit of a give, when you press down. Yeah, it's like when you, when you press down, you can feel the cork give just a little, sort of like a self-leveling tamper. Uh, now I don't use a WDT tool. Um, Oh, I forget what it stands for, but basically it's like little needles that break up any clumps in the... Oh, goodness. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not there yet. Who knows? You may see me WDTing soon. <laughs> I just give the, the thing a little shake and a little tap. And then I figure, I mean, the grinds come out very lump free from this grinder. I must say the Kinu grinder creates a beautiful grind, very consistent. I can tamp it down. This rests nicely in my hand. I give it a little swirl just to sort of, I don't know, polish the surface, make it look nice. And then this screen, the little shower screen goes in on top of the coffee and with my big fingers, I just push it down a little bit. That just settles it into the coffee. And then I use my greater good scale again. Turn it on. And I'm going to just bring the coffee right up to the boiling point. Water. Bring the water right up to the boiling point. So. The whole, one of the things about the, the robot is it's designed for easy temperature management. Because the, uh, the little coffee cup doesn't actually touch this big stainless steel uh, thing and I don't have, like it's an open bottom. So the, it comes with little pores that can clip on but they're stainless steel and they will absorb a lot of heat. So I keep it the, the professional open bottom and therefore the heat, I don't have to do anything for heat. I love that aspect. I don't have to get fancy with it. I just use right off the boil water. So as I mentioned, if I put in somewhere around 60, 61 grams of water, I get just the right output. So I measure the water going in. There we go. Scale is nice and consistent and accurate. So 61.9. Then I lift the arms of the robot. I haven't found a need to like have a device up here like a rubber band to hold these arms up, which is what a lot of people do. I don't find it's a real problem. So I just, it's a little awkward doing this backwards. It's usually facing me, but there we go. This goes in. And I am going to turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Scale goes nicely underneath, right between the legs. And my nice crew propel cup goes underneath there. Perfect clearance. I tear that out. And now what I do is I just bring it down under light pressure to start until I see just the first couple of drinks. This is like a, a pre-infusion just wetting the coffee puck. There we go. 
And at this point, what I like to do is I just glance up at the clock, sort of see where the sweep second has hand is, just so I can assure myself that I'm running around a 30 second, 25 to 30 second. And there it comes. And the arms come all the way down. And I'm getting 36, 8, 9, 40, and pull up in around 30 seconds. There's my beautiful espresso, the gorgeous crema on top of it. And I have a nice clean puck in there that's easy to tap out. So it's a nice, clean, simple process. So here's my espresso. Let me pull this out of the way. These cups by Crew are designed to sort of, as you agitate and swirl, there's little dimples in there that sort of de-layer the espresso. It actually works. If you check our other video, you can see that. And here's my espresso. Mmm. Beautiful. Very subtle. Nice. Sort of, I don't know. We keep using the word vegetal. <laughs> <laughs> which seems like a strange word, but it does have that, that quality to it. Very different flavor than the dark roasted beans, which are really deep and caramely. Um, but this is a nut, you know, the lighter roast allows you to taste the flavors of the bean and the openness of it, and it's a really beautiful sip. Mm. This is what we've been doing with our Café Lot robot. And this is what we've uh, sort of evolved our tastes and our technique. And if you're just getting going with the robot, it takes a little while to get used to it, to sort of get a sense for the pressure on the gauge. You can use the gauge to sort of get a sense of the pressure to develop that feel. And once you do that, it's so easy to just sort of know by feel exactly where you need to be with your grind and your dose to get consistent, tasty results that you'll really enjoy. So have fun. Enjoy, <laughs> and we'll see. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe. Like. Oh, like, like. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if you like. If you like this, like it, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can see our future videos as they come out.